Today, there will be something done in sitting and there'll also be something done lying down and you'll be able to do the lying down portion on your bed or on your floor. Uh, probably not so much a recliner um, and it won't be really great in a chair. We, you can try to adapt it to a chair, but it won't be as good in a chair. And uh, I indicated in your email that you would want to have a stack of like four bath towels folded. And uh, Brian will give you more details about that in a bit. But I'm going to just turn you right on over to Brian now. And we are going to have a really great time. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're going to take, we're going to get a chance to explore three different processes today of Bones for Life. And the first is to deepen a little bit more what we began yesterday with bouncing on heels, which you know that you can do from a chair. You can experience it from a chair if you wish, or in standing. And I'm going to join you in standing. Anyone that would like to be standing with me, you're welcome to come to standing. And you might stand behind a chair even, and just to be able to have a hand on a chair could be nice. I'm gonna to need to move my camera, so I'm gonna turn my video off for just a second. As you decide if you're going to be sitting in a chair, or standing maybe behind a chair. And if you're in a chair, of course, you'd be wiser to be near the front of the chair so that you can really have your, and your feet on the floor so that you can really begin to feel the weight moving into your feet. And those of us in standing know that there's already a lot of weight in our feet, right? There's already a lot of weight in our feet. And maybe you can start to notice that one foot has the slightest bit more weight than the other. Which foot is that for you? And if you're not sure, you could take a little weight onto one foot, right? A little sway on that one foot, whether you're in a chair or standing and a little sway, a little weight onto the other foot and kind of go, oh, wait a minute, yeah, I do have more weight resting on this foot. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Without any need to change anything. Without any need to change anything. And if you're not so sure, you can just kind of like guess, right? You can go, oh yeah, maybe there is a little bit more here, just out of curiosity. And then begin to look out into the distance and just see what it feels like. How does your head rest over your shoulders? <clears throat> does it feel like your head's getting what we call a free ride over your shoulders, over your hips, over your feet, especially if you're standing? And then you might recall we did that little bouncing on heels yesterday. So can you just lift your heels and tap them down? and lift and tap, and then do it to that two count and say, pum pum to yourself. Pum pum, 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 one more, pum pum. Pause and feel. Has that stirred anything up within you in terms of your standing? Maybe your head feels a little lighter, or maybe not. Or maybe the weight has felt like it shifted in your feet already. Could something so simple create change? And then you might recall we did something for our neck, right? So what I invite you to do is to slide one hand up to your breastbone and one hand around to the back of your neck where you can spread your fingers out, little fingers on the back of your head, your thumbs on your shoulder, your first finger is just above that little bump at the base of your neck, that beautiful bump. And this hand, and this hand that's gonna be on your neck is just gonna hang out there just to kind of sense what changes here. And this hand on your breastbone, can you begin to scoop that hand in and then up? Stand to the side so you can see something that happens maybe with my neck. I'm going to scoot my breastbone in and up. So we're trying to find some length for our neck in a diff with in a different, very different way and in a different place. Right? Could scooping this breastbone in and up really feel like you're pressing into the bones here, the bones of your breastbone and ribs? Scoop in and up. 
And once you have something that you like, keep that. Look out in the distance. Let's bounce on our heels. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, one more, bum, bum. The hand that's behind the head, could swipe up to confirm the length. Hand that's on your breastbone, could swipe down. And pause and feel. What's changing? Every breath changes us. Every breath changes us. So what's changing with this even bigger movements than a breath, right? And you might recall we did something for our low back, right? So could you bring both hands, let's try both hands, to bring your thumbs into your navel and let your fingers point down towards your pubic bone and start with your knees just softly bent, like a little micro bend in your knees. If you're sitting in a chair, it's already gonna be bent. And you gather some skin below your navel down near your pubic bone gather some skin, and then draw that skin up. And you do that a few times. You let it go, and then you try it again. Try to feel, what does this do with your low back? Lengthens it, doesn't it? So we're shortening the front of ourself to create some length on the back of ourself. And the next time you've gathered some skin and drawn it up, your knees softly bent, Look out into the distance and let's bounce on our heels here. Bum bum, 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 one more, bum bum. Let it go. It's a big breath, just come for you. And then the all important thing that Cynthia reminded us, reminded us of yesterday, right? Of putting it all together, putting it all together. So what I invite you to do is to bring a hand up to your breastbone and bring a hand to your near your navel. Your thumb could be in your navel. And then you can move your thumb if you want to. It doesn't need to stay there. So that your fingers point down to your pubic bone again. So we're going to do what we just did with two hands with one hand. And can you start with your knees softly bent, a little micro bend in the knees if you're standing. You scoop your breastbone in and up as you gather skin at your belly. And you kind of feel and you let it go and you feel, what did that do? What did that do for you? If you're standing, maybe it even changed the weight in your feet. Without you trying to do anything on purpose. All you're doing is gathering skin at your belly and scooping your breastbone in and up. Maybe as you exhale, soften even more. And then once you have something you like, keep that. Look out in the distance, out on the horizon, bounce on your heels now. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, one more, bum, bum. let it go. Feel the breath move through you. And begin to bring your awareness to your feet once again. And which foot has more weight? Is it the same foot as before? Is it different? Is the weight more evenly spread out between your feet? Or it's a different foot have a little bit more weight now. And you could sway the slightest bit, take a little bit more weight on each foot to kind of feel like, oh yeah. Huh. And then how about your head? Does your head feel like it's resting? Are you resting your head more easily over your shoulders, over your hips, over your feet? Which is to say, did your whole system get an upgrade? through those simple little things we did. You might take a little walk around and feel if that's right for you, just to feel what it's like to walk.
especially if you can walk like down a hallway where your arms can swing more easily, where you kind of get into your more of your own gait. Sometimes walking around the room limits us a little bit, right? I'm feeling that with myself, but I want to stay on the camera with you. Feeling for differences, feeling for these subtle differences is our is the whole thing of Bones for Life. And even beginning to appreciate something as simple as a breath, right? Something as simple as the smallest weight shift in a foot that could make our whole life easier. Good. So I invite you to bring yourself back. And I'm curious, because many of you had a chance to experience this yesterday. I recognize many faces from yesterday. See if you can wiggle your fingers if you got some improvement today. Oh, I'm seeing many, many fingers wiggling. Good. And how many people found it even easier today? Second time. Second time through for many of us. A few people. Okay, a few people. Yeah. Yeah, the more and more we play with this bouncing on heels, that's a life changer. So we always invite people to bounce on heels every day. We'll say more about that down the path here but to bounce on heels every day and begin to, one, get to know oneself through touch and through awareness, and two, to begin to see if these little things begin to create changes in the way we stand on, the, stand on this amazing planet, the way we stand in our truth, the way we stand up for ourselves, the way we walk around, the ways we walk around. So what I'd like to do is move right into our second process here, and this process is going to require a table or desk. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use here. So here's my kitchen table. We need a stable chair. All right, so a chair that's not on wheels. And if it is on wheels, lock the wheels. It would be ideal if there weren't armrests. But if you have armrests for this one, I don't think they'll bother you too much. And you need that stack of towels. Right, stack of towels, and it could be blankets too if you don't have that many. It's like Cynthia, four towels. Who has four towels when they live alone? My goodness. So I'm going to also use this as a little height as well as a possibility. I think there's a lot of women with four towels. <laughs> <Are you kidding? laughs> maybe, maybe I should say four towels that I'm willing to show on camera. Maybe that's the better. Maybe <laughs> So I'm going to let everyone get some get some things. I see people walking around their rooms to get things. So I'm going to give everybody some time to, to get, get what you need and get situated. And then I'll show you the setup a little bit. And then we'll have some other things we'll do before we actually get to the process, too. So the reason I say four towels, I'll just I'll show you what I yeah. do. Because, oh. And then Brian's going to show you what you do if you don't have four towels, right? <laughs> the reason I say four towels is I fold them this way so, this nice. is you, so that I can get my elbows on. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you. But you could use a desk, a snack tray, a table. I mean, you're, you might just have your laptop on a desk. Just move your laptop back. Sure. sure. Yeah, I folded mine so that my elbows stay on. It doesn't look like it, but they're 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 on there. They're on there. Your, your towels look so nice, though. Maybe we should go shopping sometime, Cynthia. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. <laughs> I'm, sure you're, I'm, sure, I'm sure your mother could do that with you, too. I, I feel like I'm playing the mother role there. <laughs> funny. Funny, funny. Funny, funny. All right. I see it looks like many people are getting close and ready. Go ahead and just sit down here so that you can see me. Good, good, good. So we do want to fold these towels so that if we're to place our arms on top of each other so that a hand is either on top of an elbow or under an elbow so that the towels will support our whole lower forearm that's on these on these towels okay like so like so so you can start to fold things to get situated that way 
And the other nice thing too, is you can keep changing the heights of these. So you could roll them too, instead of folding them. If you need, feel like you need, if you brought four and you're like, goodness, I would love to have five. If you roll it, it gives me another almost a inch or centimeter or two. So some different possibilities there. I see lots of people still getting ready, so. Good, good, good. And I've got my stable chair, right? And I even, and we're gonna be sitting near the front edge comfortably, stably on this chair. And you can also decide, and you want your feet to be touching the floor. You can't quite see that where I am, but my feet touching the floor. So that I really feel the weight, again, the weight of my body moving into my feet, settling there so that everything above is relaxed and easy. And like, I feel like my chair was a little low. So I actually put a towel, I sit on a towel on my chair to get up, get my hips up just a little bit higher. I don't know, maybe a centimeter and a half, almost an inch, almost an inch higher. So you can make all kinds of adjust adjustments to make this comfortable. Now, a couple other things. We're gonna to wanna to do this with, I think it's nice to be able to have your forearms available. So like pulling up sleeves could be nice. That's why I didn't butt my shirt here. And jewelry off. So watches, bracelets. If you have a ring that has a, you have the luxury of a big stone on it, you might at least turn it down so that it's not gonna be anywhere near your face. Earrings off, if you have any face, facial piercings, you might consider taking them off as well. So no jewelry. And what I'd like to show you, and we're gonna set up and then we're gonna do a little walking around after this. So could you set up in such a way that you're gonna have a forearm on top of a forearm and that your forehead is gonna be resting on that top forearm? and you're sitting near the front of the chair. So say that again, forearm on top of forearm, head resting on that top forearm, and some way or another it feels like your spine could be long. So for me, I'm feeling a little bit kind of cramped right here. So I'm gonna back my chair up a little bit so that maybe it can feel like, oh yeah, so it's much better for me. Much better for you. So one tip is to back your chair away to find that length. Another tip is to, if you feel like, oh my goodness, how in the world can I stay here for more than a second? It needs to be higher. It needs to be higher. So you can make it, you can make it as high as you need to be, right? As high as you need to be so that you are comfortable here and it feels like your spine is long. So that is our setup. Should also say, I'm gonna keep my glasses on just so I can see you, but um, everyone else should be wise to take your glasses off eventually here. And what I'd like to invite you to do before we actually get into the process is bring yourself to stand for just a moment. I see a question in the... Chat, yes, we will be hinging from our hips. That's right. So we fold ourselves over onto those blankets or towels. So as you're standing and just taking a moment to feel, we can give all these opportunities and bones for life just to feel oneself. Just to feel oneself. Something we maybe don't get a chance to do much. When we were babies, we felt ourselves all the time. We noticed ourselves all the time. We were wise then. And we can be wise again. And what I'd like to invite you to do is to walk around and listen to the way one foot contacts the floor. So you're feeling through one foot as that foot contacts the floor. And maybe you compare it to the other foot, just out of curiosity, just to have something to notice the differences between your feet and the way that your feet move you forward 
on this planet. And as you listen to your feet, you might start to bring some awareness up to your upper back, perhaps. And when you press through a foot, or when you stand on a foot, how does your upper back respond? Does it feel, what does it feel like? How do you feel there? It's a place that's tough to be in a lot of our awareness because we need, we don't see it so often, right? Unless you have some special mirrors or something. So bringing some awareness to this place that was, that's very important for walking. It's also a place that you might recall Ruthie, the creator of this whole Bones for Life program. It's where she had some issues. Good. Very good. Bring yourself back and set yourself up without all without any jewelry, right? So that you can place one forearm on top of the other forearm and your forehead on that top forearm and that you're comfortable, right? So you've got some ways to make yourself comfortable. You can back your chair away. You can build up the height a little bit more. And we wanna really relax and take your glasses off. I'm gonna keep mine on just so I can see you. Can you really feel the weight of your head on that top arm? So we do wanna let go of the weight of your head on that top arm. And then super small movement, keeping your nose pointing down to the ground. Could you smear your head like an inch or a couple, or a couple centimeters to the right? And then you smear back. So you're smearing your head to the right, smearing it back. And you do that just a couple times. And it already feels like, oh my goodness, it's too much. Make the distance smaller. Make it more like a quarter of an inch or a half a centimeter. And you feel the weight of your feet on the floor. And then come back to the middle. And how about smearing your head to the left? And then back to the center. And we really want to move slowly. So this smearing is like it would take this long or longer, you know, like smearing your head to the right. That's all one move. Everything I just said there is that length of time. And then smearing your head to the left takes that amount of time. So it's nice, slow, slow smooth, steady. And so that you can kind of compare, what's the difference when you smear your head to the right? What's the difference when you smear your head to the left? It's one direction easier. Very good, very good. Bring your head back to the middle and feel your feet on the ground and press your feet on the ground and you can even press your arms into your towels to bring yourself upright. And we'll rest just in sitting, which is an interesting way to rest, right? Sitting up. And see if you can just feel, is there something different about the way that you're sitting on this chair? Is your head lighter than before or heavier than before? Brian, could you give another word for smearing? Yeah, excellent. So how about uh, if you imagine that there's like uh, something that you like on your forehead, like butter or chocolate sauce, a real thin chocolate sauce, or honey, like a lighter, thinner honey, that you're going to spread that chocolate sauce or that whatever you obviously like chocolate, I guess, keep saying chocolate sauce. You're going to spread that from that same place on your forehead onto a little line on your arm, all right? You're going to spread it, spread it. So let's all come and try it again. Come back to one forearm on top of the other. Your feet are on the floor. Your hips are near the front of the chair. You give over the weight of your head to your arms. 
And you're gonna spread that butter, chocolate sauce, thin honey to the left and to the right, slowly, slowly. And again, you wanna make sure that your nose points down because we're not allowing our head to, to roll, right? We wanna use the same place on our forehead on our arm, no matter where our head travels, the same place. And you really need to let your head be heavy here. You really need to let your head be heavy. And can you go even more slowly? Half as, half as fast as before. Half as fast. And start to notice that there's a weight shift, isn't there? It's a weight shift in your, in your hips. When you smear your head to the right, where does the weight go? You smear your head to the left, where does the weight go? And is it true in your feet too? Is there a weight shift in your feet without you trying to do anything, on purpose anyway? Do you notice that that is a response to your head? And what happens between your shoulder blades, your upper back? Good, very good. Let it go, press through your feet and your hands to bring yourself up to sitting up and just looking out in the distance. If you can let go of the need to look at your screen for now and just feel through yourself. And then let's see if we can make this even easier. So bring the arm on top of arm again. Forehead rests on that arm. You check in with the length of your spine. Do you need to nudge your chair back a quarter of an inch, half a centimeter, to be more comfortable? And then this time, can you think that your nose and your breastbone are both going to slide to the right together and both going to slide to the left together? So you're going to join your nose with your breastbone. You're spreading that butter, chocolate sauce, left and right. Your nose and your breastbone are joined together. And you go as far as is easy, right? So if you start to feel like, oh my goodness, when I go in this direction, there's a little resistance. So the next time you don't go as far. Right? You only stay in this easy range because strangely enough, that's how things improve. And we stay in the easy range is how things improve. See people even slowing down more, I love that. Beautiful. Good, so let's let it go. Give your feet on the ground and press through your feet and press through your arms to bring yourself up. Good. Just feel for a second. Does it feel like your head is lighter or heavier than before? Good. Come back. Try one more. Maybe one, one or two more things. So same setup as before. You rest your head. You feel the weight of your head resting on your arms. And then you can continue to play with that nose and breastbone moving together. You smear or slide your head on your forearms. You feel the weight shift in your hips. And maybe when you smear to the right, can you feel like something in your right armpit could start to soften? That maybe that place could begin to move to the right the slightest bit to help with this. And that when you slide to the left, that something in your left armpit could be, could soften and allow for this movement, the sliding. And could you even begin to feel that your feet could be helpful? that your feet could be helpful, that you barely, when you slide your head to the right, 
Maybe you feel like your left foot could press the slightest bit more, like an ounce more, a gram more. It's the weight of a paper clip, barely at all. And then when your head slides to the left, that your right foot could be helpful, barely at all. These are such subtle little adjustments, subtle little invitations. And could you let your mouth be soft, your jaw, like there's even the slightest bit of space between your upper teeth and your lower teeth. Maybe your tongue can get even softer. Beautiful. Very good, very good. So let's let it go and use your feet to press yourself up, maybe your arms too. <clears throat> Take a moment just to pause and feel. What it's like to be sitting upright. Because you feel like you're resting more on your bones. There's less muscular effort in your sitting here. And another thing you can find soon is even the distance between your feet, right? As you're sitting here and as you're so... You might recall yesterday, Cynthia was talking about having our knees together. Maybe it's not so helpful. Having our legs so close together in a lot of these processes is not so helpful, right? Having a little space between our feet, that our feet are about with the, the, dis, the width of our hips or so, but comfortable, comfortable. So cross your arms on top of each other again and notice which arm's on top. And if it's okay for you, could you switch which arm is on top? Could you switch which arms on top and then rest your head on that new top arm that's not comfortable at all come back to the first arrangement and begin to play with that smearing butter chocolate sauce left and right and again you stay in an easy range and you might notice that this arrangement that you've chosen the second arrangement of arms is different why why is that different do some of those ideas that we used in the last exploration are they helpful that joining your nose to your breastbone, or softening an armpit, is softening your right armpit when you smear to the right, softening your left armpit when you smear to the left, or the super subtle use of your feet, super subtle, or letting there be space between your upper teeth and lower teeth. And you slow it down even more and begin to feel what is being recruited in your upper back for this smearing. Spine is moving, isn't it? Your spine is moving quite a bit left and right with your nose, with your breastbone. Very nice, very nice. Let's let it go. Press through your feet and your hands to bring yourself up to seated. It's okay for you, when you'd like to, bring yourself to stand. And just notice what your standing is like. Again, yeah, there's something different about how you're resting on your feet. And lighter or heavier than before. Take yourself for a little walk and start to feel through one foot. That first foot you're noticing as you're walking around before. Does it communicate with the ground differently already? Just 10 minutes of an exploration be enough to create some change. Yeah, a little bit more if you'd like that a little bit more in a moment. And start to feel, does it feel like your upper back is starting to move a little bit in a different way as you walk? Your arms even swing the slightest bit more. Perhaps, right? Perhaps.
Good. So bring yourself back when you're ready. One more small thing. See if this adds to some benefits for us. So same setup as before. You feel your feet on the ground, got hip width. You're sitting near the front edge of your chair. Take one arm on top of the other, your choice. <clears throat> and check in with the length of your spine. Check in with the height of the, what you have underneath your arms as well. Need to be, you, do you need to add a little bit more? <clears throat> and then this time, this time, as you smear your head to the right, smear as far as you can go easily. And then once you're there, begin to roll your head so you can look towards your left elbow. Roll your head so you can look towards your left elbow. And then, could you have the idea that somebody you love has just a little tuft to the back of your hair and is going to lovingly, gently tug that hair to draw your head back towards your right elbow? And then you begin to roll your head, smear your head back to the middle. Slide your head, smear your head to the left as far as you can easily. Roll your head so you can look towards your right elbow. Your nose points towards your right elbow. And then somebody you love has a little bit of hair at the back of your head and draws the back of your head back toward the left, the slightest bit. And then you roll your head, you smear, you slide your head with your nose pointing down to the ground to the right. Go as far as you can easily, and then you roll your head. And then you have a little bit of hair in the back of your head. That somebody gently draws your head back to the right, the slightest bit towards your right elbow. And you continue with that. You roll your head, slide to the left, nose down. Then you roll your head, look to your right elbow. Then somebody has some hair at the back of your head, draws your head to the left. And again, you stay in an easy range. Smear through the middle, smear to the right, roll your head to look to the left. Little hair is drawn back, and then you continue. See if you can talk yourself through a few of those, right? So when you smear to the right, you roll your head to look to the left. You smear to the left, you roll your head to look to the right. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. So say it all again. So start in the middle if you'd like to start again. Smear your head and spread that butter to the right. Then you roll your head to look towards your left elbow. And then you have your head drawn with a little bit of hair to the back of your head moves toward the right. And you smear back toward the middle, you smear to the left one last time. Roll your head to look towards your right elbow. Somebody has a little bit of your hair and draws your head back towards your left elbow. And then smear back to the middle. Use your feet and your arms to press yourself up to sitting. And just sit here for just a second, just begin to feel. Is there a different quality to your sitting now? You feel like you're sitting on a different place on your sit bones, perhaps. And when it's right for you, begin to bring yourself to stand. Simply stand a moment. And feel what's different. Check in with the weight in your feet again. Is your weight settling on a different foot or even on a different place on your foot. 
maybe closer to your heels than before. Some special place we call the front of the heel in Bones for Life. It's actually closer to the middle of the foot, believe it or not. And it is the back of the foot. Take a little walk around again, especially you can walk in a place where you can take a few more steps in a row. If you have to leave your camera for a while, do that, or you can go to a hallway or outside or wherever. Or you can begin to feel through yourself Is something changing in the way you're walking. It's that foot contacting the floor in a different way that you were curious about. Good, good, good. So I'd love to have you put one word or phrase in the chat that describes what you're feeling in your self or in your walking. One word or phrase. Yeah. Here they come. Relief, more relaxed, awareness. Donna says balanced. Center of the foot stance, cool. Peaceful, very soothed, grounded, balanced. Let's, lots of big giant yawns, nice. Elongated, balanced. My head feels connected. They're, they're rolling through so fast I can't even read them all. Lighter, fluid, can feel the middle of my foot. What a gift. More upright, length, relaxed. Hips more even. How interesting, huh? Left knee not hurting now. I never even mentioned knees, right? Again, that systems approach that we talked about yesterday. 